Allow me to introduce our speaker for today, Caleb Cronister. Caleb is a product line manager with Amphenol Communication Solutions, where he is focused on delivering power solutions for next generation power distribution architectures worldwide. Thank you for joining us today, Caleb. Thanks, Greta. Uh, like Greta said, hello, my name is Caleb Cronister. I'm a product line manager for Amphenol's Power Solutions business unit. And in today's MPI Spotlight, I'm going to be going over our AC input connectors and cable assemblies, as well as our Barclip BK500 IO and BK150 IO. All three of these connectors are part of the OCP Open Rack version 3 power distribution stack, which I will also be going into a little bit more detail later on. I wanted to first go over a quick business unit overview of power solutions. We have a global manufacturing footprint featuring two state-of-the-art test labs in China and the United States. We also have four fully integrated manufacturing facilities currently, three of those being in China, and we also have a coach in India for a China plus one option. And on top of that, we have a globally staffed R&D team in the United States, Europe, and Asia, meaning that no matter where a customer might be at, we have somebody close by to support. We like to pride ourselves in best-in-class power technology. We specialize in power connectors, so we have a, a main focus on high-density contact technologies. And it's also very important that we keep a low profile so that we can enhance as much airflow as possible on our connectors. On top of that, we also pride ultra-low end-of-life contact resistance. And one of the ways that we do that is through our proprietary silver-based AGT and GCS plating technologies. One of the main concerns and things to keep in mind when it comes to high power connections is our thermal capabilities. And to combat this, we have an in-house thermal engineering team. This thermal engineering team is able to run simulations not only on our product under load, but also an entire customer system under load. And they're able to do simulations for still air, airflow, two-phase uh, liquid cooling, and also some immersion cooling coming up here. And they can analyze things such as temperature rise. They can change different materials and see all of the hot spots and much, much more. And on top of that, power connectors are often designed in last. So because of this, we need to be pretty customizable with our designs. One of the ways that we do this is through a modular tooling, meaning that the amount of power and signal contacts can easily be changed depending on what the system would require. On top of that, we also have done things such as IP sealing, making touch-proof features, field termination, different latching systems as well. And then just quickly wanted to showcase our entire product portfolio. These are all power connectors ranging from low current connectors, such as our Minitech power line and our card edge connectors, all the way up to our 1000 amps and even higher bar clip connectors. So the two product lines that we'll be focusing on are these OCP bar clips, and these are the product numbers, are the part numbers that are already in distribution in the NPI package. And then we also have another NPI package for our OCP AC input connectors. This features both two cable assembly options, one NEMA and one IEC plug. And then we also have four different right angle and vertical male connectors for the PCB termination. So I think it's important to first um, clarify what is OCP in the first place. And to explain this, it stands for Open Cube Compute Project, and it was started by Facebook in 2009. It is a collaborative community focused on redesigning hardware technology to efficiently support the growing demands on compute infrastructure. And the overall goal of OCP in the data center world is to create the most energy efficient data center possible as you can see down here, there are many large members of this community that are actively participating. And there are a couple of main things that should be noted about OCP. They feature open sourced hardware designs, meaning they are open for any, anybody to modify, anybody to manufacture and distribute. And from a business perspective, 
This allows for multiple sources of similar products, driving competition up and prices down. From an efficiency perspective, collaboration on a large scale like this allows for much quicker and more impactful innovation in the data center industry. And also included this slide just to show that it is a global community. There are many different regional communities that work together on different open projects, ranging from servers, security, or what we'll be going over today is the rack and power. And all of this collaboration leads to group innovation. For data center rack and power, on the left here, we have the ORV3, standing for Open Rack version 3. And these are the different specifications that fall under it. Our AC input connector falls under the PowerShelf Universal Input Connector spec. The IT gear connector falls under the IT gear input connector. And then the PK500 falls under the power output connector spec. Quickly should know we do have products that fall under the MCRPS and are fully compliant with, with, that, with those specifications as well. And on the right, emerging cooling is a uh, topic being explored heavily by the OCP community. And we have run some test numbers for our OCP products as well that I have in a future slide. Firstly, we have our AC whips or AC input power connectors. These are rated for 32 amps per pin and come in a seven pin connector design for star, delta, and single phase connections. As stated in the last slide, it's fully compliant with the ORV3 power shelf spec. And it also comes in both NEMA and IEC cable options. You can see in here, this is an example of it being used inside of a rack on the right picture. And then here are our board side connectors inside of a power shelf. This slide really highlights our polarization that we built into the connector, also known as keying. Um, this makes it impossible to mate the connectors incorrectly. If you accidentally made a connector incorrectly, it could damage it. So adding features such as this polarization keying feature makes that impossible to do so. It's also rated for up to 600 volts AC, and we also offer a hard shell and an overmolded shell option, which you can see in this next slide on the bottom. This will be an example of a hard shell, 45 degree cable exit. And then we also have a fully overmolded assembly as well. At the top, you can see the different board side connectors, and it is very customizable. So we have a right angle PCD termination and also a vertical. But on top of that, we also do offer a crimp termination for cables to connect and a hybrid. So this one in the top right would be six right angle PCB terminations and one crimp. So this is a great example of what a power shelf does within a data center. It takes AC power from the facility using our AC whip cables and inputs it into the power shelf. The power shelf's PSUs convert the power from AC to DC and also make it 48 volts, which is what an ORV3 power shelf uses, and puts it onto our bar clip BK500 connector, which would then power the entire bus bar running up the back of the rack, which you can also see in this diagram right here. One thing that you should be noted is that in some diagrams, there will be one AC whip connector, but oftentimes you will see two, just depending on how much power they need to input. And in an ORV3 rack, they decided to separate the power shelf and the battery backup shelf and also connectorize them. And this allows for rack um, integrators to customize where they would want to put the shelves. So for example, you could put the power shelf on the top you could put the BBU shelf on the bottom or anywhere in the middle, whatever makes the most sense. And that power would get put onto this BK500, powering the bus bar and connecting to all of the IT gear connectors. Here is where the AC whip is uh, shown here in this diagram.
Next, I wanted to go over the power shelf connector. So this is our Barclip BK500 IO, featuring two power circuits and two chassis ground contacts, which is brand new. In still air, this connector is rated for 360 amps load and 360 amps return, so 720 amps total. However, tested at 45 degrees C with 300 LFM of airflow blowing onto the connector, it's capable of <clears throat> moving 500 amps load and 500 amps return at 1,000 amps total. Now, one new thing about this connector and also the BK150 that we will be going over later is it features these chassis ground contacts, which are rated for 64 amps up to two minutes. The reason that they wrote these into the ORV3 specification is to protect components inside the rack from events such as power surges. So one thing that may cause this would be an equipment malfunction. And these contacts are able to ground up to 64 amps for around two minutes, just providing an extra level of safety. And it's also on the ORV3 spec, which this, con this connector is fully compliant with. And this and the IT gear connector both made with an ORV3 six millimeter thick laminated bus bar, meaning that it is power and return. Here I have a slide dedicated to our immersion cooling tests. So this was initial testing that we did, and we were able to do almost 200% more uh, current density in an immersion cooling environment when compared to regular still air. As you can see from this chart down here, still air has a very steep curve as you apply more current to it. And even with the airflow, 400 LFM airflow, the immersion cooling is still much more efficient at moving power and not overheating the connector. And I just wanted to pull this up again and highlight where the BK500 would be a connector in the ORV3 rack for the power shelf and also the BBU shelf. Lastly, we have our BK150 IO. So this is the IT gear connector, which connects to the payload shelves. This features two power circuits, just like BK500, and also the two chassis ground contacts, rated for 45 amps for up to two minutes. On top of that, it also features two sense pins. These are brand new. And the reason that these sense pins are important is that they work with, they work in tandem with the system's intelligence, and it can detect if power is being unplugged while current is still flowing. As you can see, they, they are featured lower in in the connector. So these would break first whenever being unmated. Um, if the system intelligence senses that the bus bar is still powered when it's being disconnected, it will cut power to the connector, meaning that it won't have any arcing. Arcing, especially for DC power, can cause a lot of damage to the, the connector. So these sense contacts try to avoid as much damage as possible. This is also rated for 150 amps load and 150 amps return, so 300 amps total, and that is all still air. Here is our initial immersion cooling testing that we did for the BK150 as well. As you can see, a very steep curve with still air. However, with an immersion cooling environment, we're able to get almost 132% increase in current carrying capabilities. And then with this being connected to IT gear shelves, all being configured a little bit differently, sometimes cable exit options are important. So we have tooled a normal straight exit as well as left and right side exits and a dual side exit. And then down here, you can see a slide to lock version. So this would act as a toolless design, meaning that you would not need a screwdriver to mount the bar clip connector into the shelf. This would go directly into a panel cutout. And then just like I did for the other two connectors, I did want to showcase uh, where this would be at in the system. So as you can see here, it is connected to this payload shelf, also known as an IT gear shelf. 
and it would distribute power throughout it, all of the components inside of it. And in a fully populated rack, there would be many different payload shelves and not just one. All right, and that is all I had for my presentation. If anybody has any questions, now would be a great time to ask them. Great, thank you, Caleb. I do have some questions for you. Uh, my first question being, what are the sense contacts on the BK150IO used for? Yeah, so the BK150IO sense pins are used in tandem with the system's intelligence and will detect if the power connector is being unplugged while, it's still, while power is still flowing. And for high current power connectors, it's pretty important because when hot plugging occurs, it will result in arcing, which can damage the connector. So it works with the system's intelligence and cuts the power before it's unmated, preventing any damage that could be caused by arcing from the connector in the bus bar. Thank you. And my next question is, what are the chassis ground contacts used for on the PK BK500IO and the BK150IO? Yep, so the chassis ground contacts for both of those are rated for 64 amps for two minutes and they provide as an added level of safety. They can protect components inside the rack from uh, events like a power surge, and they are also included on the ORV3 spec. Thank you. And another question we have here for you is, why are data, data centers looking at immersion pooling as an option for the future? So there are a few reasons for why the OCP community and data centers are looking at immersion pooling. For one, Traditional air cooling methods, so pretty much fans, are very costly. It's estimated that almost 50% of electricity used by data centers is used to power fans and other cooling elements. Also, as showcased on our slide, when power connectors are immersed in this liquid, they are capable of carrying much more current, so they are much more efficient when fully immersed as compared to just standard still air or even airflow. Thank you, Caleb. And my last question here for you is, what does polarization mean on the AC input connectors? So the polarization features uh, are designed to make it impossible to mismate connectors. You also sometimes hear this being referred to as keying features. Um, so just to make sure that they don't get mated incorrectly and if it was mated incorrectly, it could cause damage. So we just wanna make sure that that's impossible. Thank you, Caleb. That was great. And that is all that we have for today's webinar for our MPI Spotlight on OCP-OR V3 Power Distribution with Caleb Chronister.